Hey everyone, welcome back to Iguana Gaming. I'm the Iguana, and today, guys, we have finally received a release date for Arc 2.0, guys. I am super excited about this, and hopefully you all are as well. Um, earlier today, the survival Arc Survival Evolved Mobile Twitter tweeted out um, that the 2.0 update is releasing on June 17th, 2019. So that is Dungeons, Bosses, Tech, Eerie Creatures, and Tame Chronicling. And then they included this lovely picture of the Broodmother, guys. So for those of you who may not know, the Broodmother is a boss on PC. And apparently it is also coming to mobile. It looks pretty amazing here. Um, it's super exciting. So now we know what two of the bosses from the dungeons are going to be. And so I thought what we would do today is we're going to go over everything that we know is coming in this 2.0 update, um, kind of do a rundown because there's a whole lot going on here that I think we're all going to need to know and most of you are probably curious about. So let's go ahead and go through all of it. All right. So first off, we're going to start with the bosses that we know are going to be in the game. Currently, we know that this broodmother is going to be in the game and she's in this lovely like tech style room. So I do believe that this is going to be the boss room. Uh, it's really, really nice looking. There's very good tech features to it. So I think it looks really good. Very different than the PC game um, where she's in like more of an actual swampy lair. This is much, uh, much more tech themed. And I think it looks really good. And I'm excited that she's in kind of a novel environment for just the mobile game. Um, now on top of that, we also have this guy here who is the Megapithecus. Uh, yeah, and he looks angry. It's great. Um, yeah, so the Megapithecus is another boss from PC that is being brought in. And this was the first boss that we knew was coming uh, that they released in their dev update video that they did for the 2.0 um, update that they were planning on releasing and so this is really early footage but uh, I think this Megapithecus looks really good and I'm super excited to see how this goes. Now the main challenge with these boss fights guys is that you cannot bring tames into the dungeons. That is something that they've stated so it does look like you will have to fight these bosses on foot with whatever weapons you can carry into the dungeons with you. So uh, it's going to be a little bit difficult probably to defeat these guys without getting killed. Um, definitely going to be some challenges, but I'm still really excited about it. All right. So there are supposed to be a total of 12 bosses, uh, which they did announce again in that video. So this is only two bosses, guys. That means we have 10 more possible bosses coming. Um, they might bring... I probably would suspect that they would bring the dragon from the PC game as well, but all of the others are going to be kind of a mystery, which means that we'll probably have some mobile exclusive bosses as well, which I could not be more excited about. Um, I think I'm just so excited that we're finally getting boss fights and we're getting really what is an end game in mobile um, at long last. So. All right, uh, now let's go ahead and go through all of the Twitter information that has been released about the 2.0 update um, in recent months. Okay, so first off, we do have this tweet um, from T.S. Williamson, who, for those of you who don't know, he is one of the owners of Wardrum Studios that develops the mobile game of Ark. You should definitely follow him on Twitter. He always is dropping really good information about the game. Um, so basically... Dungeons are going to be available in all game modes, guys. That means single player, PvE, PvP, does not matter what it is. You will be able to play dungeons no matter what game mode you're in. I know that a lot of people thought that single player wouldn't get it. That's not true. You will be able to play dungeons. Um, so I think that's really awesome. That means that every get, everybody's going to have a chance to run these things. And on top of that, um, it looks like they might also let unofficial server admins and god console owners switch to previously available dungeons and blueprints, which is really interesting. That means that you might actually be able to like store a dungeon map that you really liked and revisit it, um, depending on whether or not that's something um, that they are able to implement in the game. So that's really cool as well. 
Now, there was also a really good question under underneath this tweet um, that basically said, will you have every tech item added um, or will there also be this in the Ingram tree in the future? So basically, tech is only going to be blueprints and mobile tech items are going to be items that can only work for the mobile game. That means that you will not be able to build underwater tech bases, guys. There will be no moon pools coming, which is kind of sad, but it also makes sense um, just based on the mechanics of mobile. Uh, I think that's probably a good call, although I am sad about not being able to build underwater tech bases. Um, so yeah, there are going to be some limitations. It's going to be different than PC, but uh, it I still think it's going to be really good. And the blueprints are available in those dungeons, and they're going to be rotated out every week. That means that you'll get a fresh tech blueprint every week that you do a dungeon run. So that's really cool. You'll have to build them up over time if you want to get a complete set of blueprints. Um, and yeah, it's going to be really interesting to see how all of that plays out. Okay, so now there's also a look at the dungeon map. <laughs> this is kind of crazy. So apparently you're going to be like in a fog, so you'll only be able to see like basically your immediate surroundings and then kind of the general sense of where you are in the dungeon um, at all. So this is going to be really tricky because these dungeons are supposed to be pretty large, which means that you could easily get lost in these dungeons, guys. It might be very difficult to find your way around. You're probably going to be looking at this map a lot, trying to figure out what direction you need to go in and what sorts of um, like side hallways you need to explore. So it's a little bit scary. Um, and here's a closer up of that map for you just so that you guys can see it here. Uh, <laughs> it looks good. It looks really good, but it's yeah, it makes me nervous because these dungeons are so big. I kind of want a way to track where I've been, and it looks like we may not be getting that very easily. Um, okay, moving on. So this is one of the biggest deals, guys. We are going to have a mobile exclusive creature in the dungeons. So this is really awesome. Um, even though this creature is really rare and you're only going to be able to like find apparently one of them, um, yeah, this is, this is awesome because currently mobile has no mobile exclusive creatures. We have some mobile exclusive TLC stuff that we've done um, with the dodo sizes and with the, like the racing power for the Equus, but really we don't yet have an actual mobile creature and this is going to be that. So I'm really, really excited about this particular item that they're adding. I cannot wait to see what this creature is. They're apparently not going to tell us anything else about it until it actually shows up in the dungeons, which is a little frustrating because we might not even know what we're looking for until someone spots it and basically says, what the heck is that? Um, so I'm really excited, but I'm also like impatient to see what it is. Now, underneath this tweet, there's also another really good question. People have asked, if you're doing the dungeon and you die, will you have to pay Amber to do it again? Or is that only when you finish the dungeon? So apparently... Whether you die or whether you complete the dungeon, that counts as an entry. So you get one free entry per day um, and two if you're a primal pass holder. But yeah, that's a little bit tricky because that means that if you die in the dungeon, you are out of luck for that day. You're going to have to either pay Amber to run it again or wait until the next day. So basically, I'm, I'm a little nervous about this because the dungeons are large um, they're really hard, and you also have to beat the boss to get out of the dungeon alive. So I'm a little worried about how many people are actually going to be able to complete these dungeons and how difficult they're going to be, but um, we're not really sure how hard these are going to be just yet because um, they haven't told us all of the information about what's going into these dungeons um, just yet. So that's a little bit nerve-wracking, but uh, at least it's coming. All right. Now, there's also this little bit of information, which is really cool. So for Chronicling specifically, guys, uh, this tweet says that it's a bit of a portmanteau. And a portmanteau, for those of you who don't know, is when you blend two words together um, and the meanings of those words together. So in this case, Chronicling is probably a mashup of like chronicle or chronological, so having to do with time and then cycling or circling, um, 
which I think basically means uh, that when you chronicle a tame in its implant, you're basically freezing time for it. You're putting it into a mini time loop so that it stays alive in its implant um, and it doesn't ever die or expire there, which is really cool. Um, kind of just a little interesting bit of information and a great opener to talk about chronicling, guys, because chronicling is going to be one of the nicest features, I think, that comes in this 2.0 update. So this is basically the ability to store a creature in its implant indefinitely alive <laughs> and not have it count towards your personal tame limit or towards the structure like the server tame limit so that is really really cool that means that for those of you who really like to do mass egg hatchings you're finally going to have the space to do it in um, you can just store all of your other creatures and their implants do all the hatching and breeding you need to do, and then revive everything once you've selected the creatures you actually want to keep. So that is really awesome. Um, I think it's going to be really useful, and I think it's one of the features I'm most looking forward to about this update, just because I love getting mutations, and that's really hard to do when you keep hitting that tame limit. So this is awesome. Um, it is going to cost a little bit of amber, but, you know, one or two ads worth. It shouldn't be that bad. And yeah, hopefully you guys will be able to take advantage of this. It's going to be pretty cool. Okay, so now we've got um, a bunch of creatures that they've kind of teased that are going to be in um, the actual dungeon. So we do have the Spino, which looks pretty cool. And for those of you who don't know, guys, these are eerie creatures. So that means that there's a color region on these creatures that is going to cycle through the color spectrum just like eerie turrets do which is going to look really really cool i love the way that the spinal looks um we also do have this dimetrodon we have a dilophosaur we have a carnotaurus uh which is really cool i think the carna looks good and then we have the anki here which looks honestly awesome i love that spike um the spike color being the eerie part of the creature it looks really good um Oh, and yes, we also have this that was tweeted out as well, guys. This is one of the boss dossiers. So this boss dossier, it looks really cool. It kind of looks like a hologram, very similar to some of the trophies you get when you complete pursuits. But essentially, we're getting mobile-specific lore, finally. Uh, this is lore that basically is going to explain why the mobile game is the way it is, which I'm really excited about because there's a lot of lore in the original PC art game, and um, that was definitely something that was lacking a little bit in the mobile game. So I'm really excited to see what ends up in these dossiers. And I really hope it tells an interesting story about the mobile arc. Uh, hopefully it's really good. All right. Now we're going to hop on over to the video um, that the devs released when they first announced the update. And we're going to do a little bit of discussion about some of the main things in here. So first off is how are you going to access the dungeons? Um, you'll see in this clip here that the player is running up to the obelisk and then kind of looking up at the obelisk um, before being teleported into the dungeons. And so I think what that means is that essentially you're going to have to access the dungeons by going to an obelisk. Now that's cool, um, that's pretty normal arc stuff, but uh, it might be kind of sucky for people who are on PvP maps because now you're going to have to fight even harder to get to those obelisks which are sometimes really locked down by the Alpha Tribes. So um, wishing you guys all the best of luck at getting into the dungeons in the first place. But uh, I think it's going to be good, I think it'll work, and I'm really excited to uh, be able to travel to these things myself. Alright, now the next thing that's in here, and this is really cool guys, is the dungeons themselves. So it looks like here there's actually going to be traps in the dungeons. Um, so you see these swinging axes coming at you and you have to be careful not to let them hit you. So it looks like the creatures are not the only thing we're going to have to worry about in these dungeons. We are going to have to worry about not getting killed by basically what are booby traps um, and things that are going to do damage to your player. Um, in the dungeons without even being a creature. So you're going to have to be careful moving through the hallways and try not to get killed that way. Alright, now this 
is one of the treasure chests, guys. I think it looks absolutely incredible. Um, looks really cool. It's like all arc themed. And essentially, you are going to find these in the dungeons. You're going to go up to them. Um, and when you open them, you're going to find blueprints for tech items. You're going to find premium items. You're going to find element. You're going to find all of these things that you might need um, taking to take out of the dungeon or just to help you in the dungeon. So like you might get food items um, which could help you heal or keep your hunger up while you're in the dungeon, which is really cool and super useful as well. And yeah, um, so these chests, you're going to want to look for these because these are where the blueprints are, guys. And you want those blueprints really bad. Trust me, they're the tech blueprints. This is where you get them. Um, so be looking for these treasure chests uh, before you go to the boss room, for sure. Okay, so on top of that, um, what's really neat about these dungeons, guys, is that their layout changes every single week. So every week, you have a whole week to learn a dungeon layout, to get really familiar with it, to get to the boss room and get your loot and basically succeed in completing the dungeon of the week, right? But then the next week, you're going to have an entirely new layout and probably an entirely new boss and new challenges in the dungeon to deal with. So I think it's going to be really hard to get bored of these dungeons, guys. Um, I'm, I'm a little nervous about it because they are so large that I think it's going to be kind of difficult in some ways to complete, but I'm also really excited because you do have so, like, so long, a whole week to get familiar with the layout, get to where you need to go, and learn where the boss room is, so it should be a little bit faster by the end of the week than it is at the beginning, hopefully. But either way, very cool. I think it's going to be hard to get bored of these, and... Yeah, I think it's going to keep me, at least, interested in playing for quite some time. Now, we also have this, which is the entrance to the actual boss room itself. So this, um, this little teleporter pad is what you're going to want to use, and that will teleport you into the actual boss arena. So that is definitely good information to have because you're going to need to find that in order to complete the dungeon. You're going to have to beat the boss to finish this thing. So. It's going to be good, and man, that Mega Pithecus looks just amazing. <laughs> okay, yes, yeah, so there are so many great things in here. I'm so excited. Um, now, one more clip that I do have to share with you guys is this one right here. So this guy's it's a little terrifying. They did release this one on Twitter as well. In these dungeons, it looks like you enter a room and then this like weird misty green stuff pops up and it looks like you get locked into this room then this rex spawns in and you have to start fighting so i think what that means is that you have basically mini bosses on the way to your actual boss fight and i think that's going to be a real challenge and the main reason i think that guys is because these dungeons you can't heal yourself like there is no passive healing in the dungeons. They've already stated that. So that means that you are going to have to bring in a ton of med brews and be really, really careful. There are arthropleura in these dungeons. There are rexes. There are all sorts of things that are out to hurt you and the boss fight, as well as swinging axes. So if you're not very careful with your health, it would be really easy to fail in these dungeons um, pretty early on if you're just not paying attention. So Definitely be prepared. Bring in some medical brews. Um, if you have, if you run into an Arthropleura, use distance weapons. That's going to be really important. And try to dodge those poison spit attacks because they will destroy your armor. So some really difficult things coming. I'm really excited to see how it all goes. But yeah, guys, I think that that's actually going to do it um, for this episode. Yeah. So much information here, so much going on in this update. I think this is just about everything that we know so far. But if I missed anything or if you have any questions about something, please do leave those in the comments because I'm super hyped for Dungeons and I really want to start a conversation and get people excited about it because I will be running them um, immediately. I am ready to stream on June 17th when they drop this update. I will be in there in the Dungeons right away. Uh, trying to run them. I will be prepared. So yeah, hopefully you are all excited and uh, ready to run them as much as I am. All right, guys. I think that's going to do it for today's episode. So 
If you did find yourself enjoying this one at any point, please do remember to hit that like button because it seriously helps me out. And if you want to see more content like this, you can, of course, subscribe. I will get you all in the next one. Signing off, this is The Iguana.